1974. Preview Shop. Hello, welcome to 1874. It's time for a European match pre preview, even as Villa travel to Poland on Thursday. I'm delighted to be joined by Jacob Tanswell, the best Aston Villa writer they've ever had at The Athletic. Jacob, how are you? I'm doing really well, thank you. Yeah, on this podcast, and in a, probably about two or three hours' time, I'll go get some sleep because, yeah, ni up nice and early tomorrow morning. Yeah, run, run us through what your itinerary looks like for this, yeah. this European adventure, Jacob. Yeah, so I'm getting up about two in the morning, uh, uh, well, in a few hours' time, uh, getting up, driving straight to the airport, uh, flights at six o'clock, get to, get to Amsterdam first, have a two-hour layover, then to Poland, uh, and then carry out a few interviews, do a few pieces, and then, yeah, match day on, on Thursday. So it's all going to go go past relatively quick, but hopefully, I've heard it's quite a nice city, isn't it, apparently? So yeah. hopefully I can get out and have a little explore. Yeah, Legia Warsaw, of course, Villa are playing this Thursday tea time. Is this your, I know, obviously, we had you on b b before the Hibs game, but this is your first, like... European adventure in a in, in a work way, isn't it? Yeah, we, we count in Edinburgh or, or not? Because um, <laughs> it's not, I suppose it is abroad technically, but it's in, yeah. the, it's in the UK, isn't it? So we, we won't count that, but you've got now like a at least six group games to look forward to, haven't you? No, exactly. And that's you know one of the reasons why I was so excited about you know coming on board to, to cover Aston Villa was because of the opportunity of Europe and going to all these you know excellent and lovely places. Obviously, it's going to be a few far flung places as well, but you know, hopefully, the deeper Aston Villa progress, uh, the more places we can we can check out. I mean. Realistically, you would expect Villa to negotiate that group and, yeah. and get through. But actually, I think Villa will go pretty full strength. Yeah. I mean, if the Hibernian game's anything to go by, they'll, they'll pretty much go maximum strength because they did for that. But this is a, a tough away assignment, I, I would say. They're the most successful team in, in Poland's top flight. They're unbeaten so far this season. So Villa aren't going to just rock up there and, and win on Thursday. You know, they're probably going to, they'll make a couple of changes, but you will see a strong 11 and Villa are going to have to be on their game because these are the kind of games that trip teams up all the time. Remember Arsenal in the Europa League yeah. over the years, I've seen them lose a couple of games that you just don't expect them to lose. Yeah. You have to be on it still, especially in these type of games, the away ones in particular. Yeah, I just, I wrote about it today actually because obviously it's still relatively early in the season. Emery, you know, he's been saying in the last few press conferences that he's still experimenting with the players, the, the, the personnel, the system and how it works and adjusting players into systems. So, you know, if he saw the Crystal Palace game when they're one nil down, it's a good opportunity to experiment with players on the pitch and he's probably going to do it the same this time. But obviously he wants to keep that consistency in selection to build relationships. I wouldn't expect there to be too many changes like you say, Dan, but I think there's a few players that have shown good form, made a good impact off the bench in recent weeks where you probably what do you think, you know, Yuri Tillemans, John Duran, where you think you'd be a little bit hard done by if you don't start. But, you know, I've seen a little bit of Warsaw and, you know, looked them up a little bit. They're literally a better version of Hibs in terms of they play a similar system. Uh, they sit in like this deep mid block, but obviously it's probably going to be a bit of a more of a difficult place to go to, more intimidating atmosphere and a higher quality of players as well. And they're used to winning at home. You know, when, when we went to Hibs, Lee Johnson was going through a, a bit of turbulence. So, yeah, it's going to be a difficult game, but it's one that I think Villa, with Emery's experience, they should navigate. You said about players giving themselves a chance on on Saturday by coming coming off the bench and p performing so well. Do you think Duran could come in perhaps and start? Or do you think he'll go for Ollie Watkins? Tillemans, I think, probably will start. I've got, got a feeling because he's got that that European experience, will have been to similar places with, with Leicester. They're the two that are probably pushing the most, aren't they? Yeah, I think with, with Duran, I, I imagine he'll probably keep Watkins because he probably wants to keep with that same system in terms of Watkins and DRB. And although he's not ruled out playing Watkins and, and Duran together, it's it probably ruined the, the balance of the side because Emery kind of was two number 10s to, in, in the build-up structure. It was interesting what he did with Kamara um, on the weekend in terms of him dropping into a back three sometimes. So does that, in theory, open up another position for Tillemans to come into the role into midfield if Kamara's dropping into the back three? Um, I think it'd be interesting to see if you know, all three of them can play together in midfield. Uh, but Tillemans has shown that he can also play just to the left as well. So, you know, his impact's off the bench the other day was fantastic. Some of the passes he's mm. executed this season, you know, some of the stand out already, aren't they, in the last couple of weeks? So he's probably pushing to start. Obviously, he had those comments made on international duty, which were taken out of context, but still, he, this is the type of games that he's probably expecting to start and expecting to get his chance to, to you know, 
supplant Kamara and Luis. Yeah, Mariner is probably another one just just back from injury. Mm. Maybe a chance to to build up his minutes and give him some minutes so that he's ready ready for Premier League. Although every time I criticise Luca, he tends to pop up <laughs> with, with, with an assist. But I'm just thinking, you know, is this the, is this the right game actually to to throw Moreno in and, and and give him minutes, or is it better to have that consistency from from what you're saying? You kind of feel it's better to keep the, the eleven as is. I guess Zaniolo as well. Zaniolo yeah. started the last game. He came off after I think about around 55 minutes. Probably not capable of playing 90. Good performance. I really like what I see from him. Chance for him to build up his minutes again. I guess. Mm, yeah, definitely. I, I really like Zaniolo. Like he was so. Brave on the ball, he's always wanted to do something, didn't he? In terms of you know, that scoop term uh, for Matty Cash's chance. Every time he got it, he wanted to drive forward. And there's a few times where you're a little bit of a straighter, you think, can he just offload the ball a bit quicker? But he doesn't feel like that classic Italian number 10. He's quite no. tall, he's quite big, isn't he? You presses know, well as well. Yeah, he presses well. He's, he gets stuck in, he got a penchant for, for a red card as well. I think he's, I, I really do like what I see from him. And I also think if he doesn't start, he, he's one of those players that will make a real good impact off the bench. He looks like he's hungry to do it in you know, however long he gets. With Moreno, Emery typically wants about three weeks, does he, on the training ground to work with players, to nurse him back to fitness. And it's probably getting to that time. So whether you want to start him on Thursday, play, play him for 60, 70 minutes or let him come on, I think it's, he probably does need some minutes in the legs. Yeah, great news that Ramsey's back on the grass yeah. as well. But like you say, Emery does like to give it a little bit of time before throwing them back in. I would doubt we'd even see him on the bench on Thursday. No, you probably look at the Everton game next week and you say, can you nurse you know, Ramsey back into that game? Can you get him yeah, some minutes, minutes in? Yeah, and you know that means he's basically now got a full week of, of training before he has to get into any competitive matches. Do you think this is of of the three? This is the the, the toughest tie. I mean, I, I can't say I know much about Bos- Bosnian football. Outmar, I've, I've heard of, but again, I can't say I know loads about them. But this, this to me, for some reason, I don't know why. I've got in my head that because of the intimidating atmosphere, although mm. Outmar might be the same. Actually, I've just got in my head that this is arguably the toughest game that Villa have got. Yeah, I think stylistically as well. I think this Warsaw will be a bit more direct, a bit more in your face. Like I say, similar, a better version of Hibs. And you've seen Villa centre backs, especially with, without Diego Carlos and Tyro Mings, they you know, they could be susceptible physically mm. and in the, in the air. Uh, where with Alkmaar, they're a little bit more possession based. You know, they like to build you know little short sharp triangles, and that probably suits Villa a little bit more uh, from a stylistic point of view. So. Especially this is the first game in the competition, you know, maybe a bit of nerves from those that haven't played in it, you know, a lot of excitement as well. I I'd probably say this is the toughest game of, of the group stages. Obviously you're still early early days covering Villa. Is there is there a player so far that's surprised you in, in how, how good they are? Is any is anyone taking you by surprise? I've said John McGinn before, and I think it's it's him and Ezra Conso. I think I've always seen Conso as, as a good player, but I've not really watched him but I just look at him now and think he's so big, so athletic. He's got everything. And, you know, he's got a couple of years left in his contract. That's, you know, that's been talks to be extended. He needs to be called up to the England squad. I keep saying it every, every, you know, every time. But he's one of those players that can play right back, centre back. He's so adaptable, very good on the ball, very composed. And he's got everything of a modern centre back. And I've always thought he's, you know, I've always thought he was good, but I do know how good he is. So, I, you know, from the outside, I, I, I have to say he's a little bit underrated. Yeah, and Pau Torres, his partner, could be quite critical in these European games. You expect European football genu- generally tends to be a little bit more possession-based than the, the, than the Premier League. We saw his range of progressive passing on Saturday. It was a- absolutely incredible. Say what you like about his defending, but on the ball, it's... I don't know. It's, it's like having having Java in, 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 in your same <laughs> centre-back. Some, some of his passing was absolutely ridiculous. And in these European games, you feel like he could be actually a key to unlocking unlocking defences in these kind of games? Yeah, he's progressed the ball more than any other player in the Premier League this season, carried the ball more than any other Premier League player. And if I think about the two passes, I thought, wow, it's probably hits the one for Duran in, against Hibbs in the second leg and also Diaby's offside goal in the first half mm. on the weekend where he just wraps it, you know, wraps it into the channel for, for a perfectly timed run. And you just think, if a player like him can can do that when he's got time on the ball, but against a low block, that's supposed to be quite compact and he can open teams up. It should suit him, and hopefully he gets he gets a bit more acclimatized, you know, to defending counter attacks physically as well. I wasn't too impressed by his defending poor Edward's goal. No, 
happens like that. I thought to be outpaced by Matez is a bit worrying. Got a bit tight, didn't he? Got yeah. Himself, got a bit close to him. He'd he done that at Burnley, though, didn't he, for Foster's yeah. goal? He, I think so. It's, uh, he's still learning with, with that. But in these European games, like you say, where he's going to have, have a bit more time on the ball, teams are going to sit in a bit in a more of a low block. He can kill teams. And, you know, Hibbs tried to nullify that by playing a little bit higher in the second leg, but he still managed to find the pass. So, yeah, he's really exciting. And he's one that's, you know, he's made for the European stage and he's got so much experience in it. This is, you know, this is what you're going to see in Europe. Villa are pretty inexperienced when it when it comes to players who've played in Europe. But this is where the summer business now comes, comes yeah. to the fore. Tillemans, uh, Pau Torres, Zaniolo, Diaby. They've all, they've all played European football, haven't they? Yeah, that's one of the reasons, you know, part of the reasons why they signed each one of them, because they all share European experience. And Emery wants to be an established European team, be it in the European League next season or ultimately and hopefully the Champions League. But having these players with the pedigree, not only in Europe, but, you know, internationally, they play in all the biggest stages against the toughest teams. They're not going to be faced by this. So although it could be an intimidating atmosphere on Thursday, this they're, they're used to it. They've played in a lot worse. Yeah, Mazzaniolo, did he win the Conference League? Though? I can't remember if they won the Conference League. Yeah, or the, or the yeah. He's, well, he's actually won this competition, hasn't it? And scored the, scored the winner in the final, which is incredible. So that wasn't that long ago, and now he's playing for Villa. <laughs> it's too, it was the first edition, wasn't it, of the Conference League? It was, yeah. You know, and yeah, he, he was fantastic at that final. Then six months later, he's you know, carted off to Turkey. So it's been a pretty remarkable couple of years for him. But, you know, he, you know he's been speaking today about, you know, his... his love and this relationship with Emery so hopefully I think this could be a good gateway in terms of getting that regular game time and in in Europe which he's always wanted and what his talent if you read you know all the reports about him three four years ago you know he always should be on that European stage but he probably should be on the Champions League stage now uh, but he's obviously working his way back up. Yeah, He could be actually a critical player in Europe and the fact that yeah. he's got that experience of the journey of, of, of winning a trophy obviously we all know about about the manager and, and what he does in Europe, he's, he's absolutely incredible. But actually, having a player that's gone all the way in this very competition could be critical. Yeah, it's, it, it also he can, he can pass on the, pass on the knowledge, but he's got that big game experience where you just know that if things aren't going well, and a lot of these European games can be a bit you know, laborsome, it can be a battle of attrition, having a guy that can produce something and nothing, like he tried to do at his Palace. Uh, I think that could be certainly come in handy if if things you know start gradually just a decline in games or if the game is drifting. I mean, for me personally, you know, I doubt there's many people that watch as much football as, as I do. Basically, football, attack, football has taken over my life and I watch so much football. But conference league-wise, I can't say, other than really West Ham in the, in the final and the semis last year, I can't say I've ever watched loads of the conference league because it's on at the same time as the Europa League. So mm. if I'm going to watch football on a Thursday, normally I would have watched the Europa League game because they're bigger teams and, and and better games. So for me, actually, this, you know, this Europa Conference League adventure for Villa is probably really my first real exposure hmm. to, to, the, to the Europa Conference League as well. Is it a competition that you've watched loads of? Not at all. I've just watched the two finals in both years. Yeah. I, like I said to the other day when in the second leg, I was thinking, what is actually the, the Conference League theme tune? I know the Europa same. League... It's the same. It's the same, is it? Same one. Yeah, great theme tune. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, did they play it at Villa Park, the second leg? Or did I miss it? I wasn't there. I was working. At, I was working. I was. So I was in London. So yeah. I didn't actually make it to, to that game. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember hearing it on the on the feed. I was watching no. of the game. It's definitely the same. And yeah. I only know that because the football manager. It's literally, because <laughs> they've got the, they've got the rights to haven't they? So whether you're in the Conference League or the Europa League, they play that theme tune before your game. So that's that's the only reason I know about it. But it's an absolutely banging theme tune. What yeah. what a song. You know, you just think you know, typical European night. All, every player's got a mascot. You've got the centre circle. You know them shaking a flag in the middle of the centre circle. With you know, I hope that in Warsaw as well, they've got you know a lot of flags around around the stadium as well. It's I, I really hope it's going to be a, you know really good atmosphere and a competitive game as well. I don't want it to be like the Hibs game. Uh, obviously, Villa want three points, but I think Villa need to be a little bit more tested. And you know. If, if and I think it would be a good sign of where they are in this competition. If they go there and blow Walsall away, then you probably have to say, you know, undoubtedly that they will be the favourites or one of the favourites for for the for the trophy. Do you think that is what will happen? I've got in my head that it will be quite tight, narrow, narrow Villa win. I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I think it will be, but I think if they can deliver that statement of ten, it it, it, it would show. But it, like you say, stylistically as well, it's going to be a difficult game. They're going to sit back. I think if they can 
I think if they can grind out nil nil or in the last 10, 15 minutes, I think they'll try and push. But Villa, I think the onus is on Villa to go win that game, set, set up their group, really. If they can get points on the board, then, you know, we'd have to go to Bosnia, everything's sorted by then, they can rotate. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a difficult game. But like you say, that's where we go come back to Zaniolo and these players off the bench, uh, you know, Duran, for example, they can change the game. And it's almost like having you know, these ready-made replacements to come on. It's almost a game within a game. I mean, Chad in the comments has just picked up on something that I completely forgotten, forgotten about. I feel like I have a, a Polish player in there. Yes, team. yeah, Probably his native country, don't they? Yeah, he, sp- he spoke after the game on Saturday. He's uh, very excited, and apparently, he's going to be a. Uh, if he hasn't already, he's been speaking to Unai about uh, what to expect from some of those players who, who play for the national team. He, I don't think he's ever been to the, been to the ground or he, he's watched uh, Legia play. But yeah, he should be should be good and. Uh, Hopefully that you know all his family are out there as well, which I'm sure they will be. Yeah, they will be. They 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 actually follow him. <laughs> I've seen, seen them in the away end many many times. Stu Cash and and family. Oh, I mean, it'd be a complete no brainer actually for Matty Cash to be the guy on, on media duty because you know UEFA competitions. There's always a player that's chosen to be on media duty with the manager. Mm. I, I would put big money on the fact it's going to be Matty Cash. You'd hope so, but yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with, with the press conference before the game. Obviously, they have to have one, but I, I don't know what in terms of the timing. So I think tra- Villa are travelling over a, a little bit later um, at night, tomorrow night. So yeah, but it might be a, quite a late one. And these European conferences, from what I hear, t- can take a while with you know everything getting translated into different languages. All, all I'm grateful is that Emery can speak English, otherwise you'd have to be translating it into three or four different languages. And, yeah. One question would probably take us three or four minutes. I mean, if you don't know when the press conference is, that's a, <laughs> I, would, I would suggest that's a problem. Is no, as, it's as not been confirmed. Favorite. It's not been confirmed yet. So I'll, I'll, what I'll, the plan is, I'll just wander around Warsaw tomorrow night, and just as soon as I get a text or a call, I'll, I'll rock up at the stadium. Yeah, there'll be plenty of plenty of Villa fans there. I know a few that yeah. that, are set, that have already set off actually, and already in Poland, and a few that are, that that are going in the in in the morning. But yeah, I think that that wraps up this preview so show. Sorry, so Jacob, thanks ever so much for coming on and having a chat with me. And thanks to those of you in the chat as well in the in the comments. I realise it's not the best time for a live podcast, but. To be honest, the Champions League starts tonight, so I want to watch two games of football. So this felt like the the best time to do it before that starts. We'll be back with a we'll probably do a post match show after the game of, of of some description. We'll let you know on socials when that's happening. Good luck to you, Jacob, travelling to Poland. Hope you have a safe trip there and back. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Yep, let's go up the villa.